that is everything I bought in the last two weeks. And so begins the yarn. All right, so, whew, going through my uh, jet lag here. But, so for most of the yarn that I bought, I ended up using a vacuum seal bag, and this is a jumbo vacuum seal bag, because I knew I was going to buy a lot of yarn, and on my previous trip, I did not have them, and a friend loaned me one, and I thought this is a brilliant idea, because then, I mean, the weight stays the same, but you get so much more room in your suitcase. Admittedly, I was still way too close to the weight limit than I would have liked, but. Sweaters, wool I bought, it was one of the last sweaters that I bought on Shetland. I bought it at Jameson and Smith. And if you're thinking, oh, well, she must have bought this all at the same place. No, uh, Jameson's and Smith and Jameson's, where I bought the fabric versus the wool, which was Jameson and Smith. Those are two different companies run by two different families. It just has the same name and no, they did not break off. No, they are not, you know, feuding or not rivals. That's not what's happening. A lot of people, whenever you ask them, people are like, oh, there's no bad blood. We don't know why people are saying there is. They are different shops. I bought only the fabric from Jameson's uh, because I preferred Jameson's and Smith's wool colors for what I was working with. Uh, and I also, they sell a lot of like pre-done finished knitwear, beautifully done, but I was more in the market this time on this trip for making the sweaters myself. So if any of you guys have done Susan Crawford's cloud busting sweater, that is what this will be. Now I really loved her traditional original colors, just lovely, lovely colors. But for me, I bought this at the end of my trip and I really, really wanted a sweater that reflected the landscape I saw in Shetland. And there was one day, I will link the picture right up here, uh, cliffs, I found this beautiful photo. There was, there was heather, there was beautiful green grass, but there was also just stunning blue in the water, not to mention the, the rocks were either gray or they were so dark black they looked blue from the water. And I also really loved that you could see this white foam on it. So I pulled all of the colors. I'm really excited to share that sweater with you. I'm not sure if I'll do a full video about it. Uh, I think Susan Crawford's newest book is coming out on the 18th of this month, that's September 18th. Uh, if you've pre-ordered it, uh, if not, I know she sells copies on her website. I guess we'll start with what's on top, which uh, incidentally was shopped for later. I'm gonna need a chair for this, but in the end, it all came home with me. Okay, so these I have a lot of. These are 50 gram balls, 25 gram balls, but they are all the same. They are Uridale yarns, double knit, and they're 100% organic native Shetland wool. This is really cool because the trip I was on took us exactly to their farm. We got to see the sheep come in. It was really lovely to hear about their process, why they do what they do with the sheep, understanding what it means to be organic today and what helps with uh, environmental costs. Like a lot of those chemicals might be good for the sheep, but is it good for the land? No one knows uh, in a lot of cases. And something uh, that they said was in organic sheep farming, it's more about what you don't do than what you do. Are you treating the sheep with care? Are you making sure that they're grazing on organic pastures? Are you bleaching the wool with toxic chemicals? Are you super washing the wool? So that I thought was really lovely. But I got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the large skeins and three of the small. And this will become a over sort of sweater, sweater jacket, sort of in a bomber style. So this hopefully will be coming around, around Thanksgiving. Uh, it is a lace worked bomber style sweater and I don't know, I was looking to do it in a neutral, but then I found this sort of ochre color. And anyone who knows me knows that my closet has a lot of golden ochre in it, but it is a color I wear so often. So I really enjoyed this one. I thought it was really lovely and I thought it a great vintage flair to it. So this sweater is really interesting because I did not buy it on Shetland. I bought it the day I arrived in Scotland into Aberdeen and my trip decided to go to a local yarn shop as sort of a warm-up. Um, but I found this beautiful, uh, it's called West Yorkshire Spinners Exquisite Four Ply. It is 80% Falkland wool and 20% uh, 
uh, mulberry silk. This is gonna be really nice because this is similar to what I buy in Miss Babs. It's an 80-20 split of wool and silk, which gives it a really lovely shine. If anyone has watched my first video on this channel, which I still have not done the second half to, uh, which is the yellow sportswear sweater, that is a similar composition. So this is going to be made into a striped uh, vintage pattern that does not have a gauge, it does not have measurements, it'll be a very experimental project that I'm hoping to get done for spooky season this year. So this will be very soon coming up. It has a lovely sheen, it's gonna drape really, really nicely, I can tell. This one has a lot of skeins because they only had the 25 gram balls in the colors I want and I, I'm a little embarrassed and a little proud to say that I took all but one of their pink skeins. So, sorry, not sorry, I will buy all of it. This is a really beautiful raspberry Uridale yarn and I wanted to make this beautiful 1930s uh, basket woven style sweater and it has a lovely color on it. So instead of doing the entire piece in one color, uh, the vintage pattern itself has a very, very dark color and I didn't really want it to do that. I wanted to sort of be a little bit more playful, a little bit more soft with my color palette. So I've chosen a slightly sort of, I want to call this pink like a Bavarian cream and then that is just like pomegranate. So we've got the Bavarian cream and the pomegranate and I'm relating everything back to food again. That being said, I expect this to be more of a Christmas knit, so I would say probably look for this in December. If you would like for me to do a Christmas video uh, detailing tips and tricks for knitting for people for Christmas, uh, potentially uh, what you should do knitting for success for Christmas, and what I personally do knitting for Christmas, uh, let me know in the comments. Now that that's sort of addressed, I think it's Time we address my deep attachment and slightly unhealthy obsession with buying Jameson and Smith wool on this trip. I think I bought at least, I think I bought four to five sweaters my first day in. And I will link the photo here that is also on my Instagram of me on the verge of tears of joy upon entering their store and seeing how much yarn was in there. Uh, I wanted to go to Jameson and Smith ever since I was about seven or eight when my mom went to Shetland and came back with this gorgeous sweater and I have wanted to go ever since because, you know, I was still a knitter at age seven. I've been knitting since I was four. So the idea of this giant place full of yarn, kind of like an amusement park to me, but then my mom brought home this sweater and I was like, oh my God, I need to go. So for me, the sort of over 10, 15 year journey of wanting to go and finally getting to go, I was so excited. And I might have gone, because of that, a little bit overboard with buying wool, but I don't currently think so. So I wanted to knit this very lovely colorwork sweater, but with balloon sleeves, because often I don't really work with balloon sleeves. Uh, it makes it hard to get a puff at the top because the weight of the sleeves drags it down. This, however, fit perfectly. This is going to be a red sweater with a white cowl to top, kind of, and a lot of really beautiful sort of Nordic pictures, Fair Isle Inn. Uh, I would say it's very similar to folk art meets knitting. So I'm very excited for this to happen. I'm not sure when this is going to happen. Uh, unlike a few of these other ones, sort of I have seasons dedicated and I know how long they should take and I think I can do them for a deadline for this channel. Uh, if you'd like to see this one sooner rather than later, let me know. So I was wrong. There is something left other than Jameson and Smith in this bag. Um, I have found the yarn I bought at the Scalloway Museum, museum in Shetland. It is a museum that is mostly dedicated to the legacy of the Shetland bus, and it's helped during World War II, uh, moving people across the water from Norway, moving funds, many lives were lost. And it is a really beautiful museum. It's small, but it's very, very nice. And when I was in their gift shop after, I found this basket full of wool. I also found some fingerless gloves from my boyfriend that are beautiful. But uh, I found this basket of wool and I asked our tour guide for some help. Like, do you know anything about this? And she said, Fula wool is incredibly hard to get your hands on. Uh, there is a website you can order it from, but it's not consistent. It, it is harder to find. I picked up two skeins of white and I picked up seven skeins of gray. And my hope is to knit a 
jumper for myself, maybe with three quarter sleeves and a little bit of fair island detail in white. If I don't have enough, I'm hoping I can order what I need, but this is what they had available. So this is what I bought. Aha, I was wrong. I thought I bought three. I bought three of the white ones of the Fula. This is the problem with the bag. I can't see. So this is gonna be a piece that I'm going to be trying to replicate from the Shetland archives. Now the Shetland archives are at their uh, museum in Larwick, and it is a gorgeous feather and fan patterned blouse. Now, Susan Crawford has made a pattern of this, which I don't think I'm going to use. It is a beautiful sweater that has been in the archives for a really long time, and I loved the colorway so much, I immediately, and I went ballistic. I got all of the different colors. I've got two shades of yellow, I've got two shades of blue, and I have two shades of brown. Not to mention, I think I also have a skein of white in this uh, for accent colors. So. It's gonna be slightly more subtle, slightly more bright blouse for me, but I'm really excited because I also don't do much lace work and uh, feather and fan is pretty standard for vintage knits. So even though it will look fancy, I can probably accomplish it fairly easy. I love that the fact that every shot, it's just sort of like the yarn is coming to get me, like you bought us, now work with us, sort of like, oh God, I'm exposing how nerdy I am. Oh my God, okay. Knit with us. Just knit with us. Okay. <laughs> Next we have a cute small project that probably won't take too long. I'll probably do this also for the Thanksgiving time of year. If you're lucky, you'll get two videos that month, uh, sort of November time. But my plan is to make a very lovely sort of, I think this is fawn. This is fawn, this is stone. A stone blouse, uh, but with these two colors, which is a lovely plum and green. That will make sort of a Scottish thistle flower uh, pattern. I'm going to be intarging it on a vest and the vest background will be this and these will be the intarsia colors. So that's a very straightforward blouse. It should, blouse, I keep saying blouse, vest. And it really shouldn't take me that much time. So November most likely we'll have two videos. It's only one sweater left. However, it is a very large sweater. It does not end at the high hip. It ends more like a peplum at my low hip. So there's a lot of yarn and a lot of colors involved in this, so this could take a sec. Okay, so yeah, these are my colors. Uh, I'm not sure if based on what they are, you can guess what I'm making. These will be incorporated into another movie recreation piece, so let me know in the comments below if you can guess what it is. See y'all soon and thanks for, thanks for looking at yarn with me. Bye! Oh wait, no, 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 I forgot one thing, I forgot one thing. So. Uh, if you're still here, I did buy oh, damn. this is the new uh, lace weight. It's a Shetland wool one ply cobweb weight. Now, the one ply cobweb weight is specifically for knitting Shetland lace, which is its own thing entirely. And when I tell you it's its own thing, I mean, they have an entire section of their museum dedicated to beautiful, beautiful pieces. One that was knitted for Queen Victoria. Uh, there was two knitted and one got sent off to her and one was considered a sample and was kept in Shetland. So it's amazing and they're beautiful and they're just the most gorgeous cobwebby just... But I purchased a pattern and I purchased the lace weight yarn for that. Now I probably won't be making a video about that uh, so much as maybe there'll be sort of a time lapse of me doing it. I'm not sure. If that's something you'd like to see, let me know in the comments uh, and I will maybe do it. We'll see. It depends on how many people want it. I did make a sampler though to prepare myself because I don't do lace very often. I do a lot of color work, but I really don't do lace. Apart from that, I have to go finish the sportswear sweater.